Hello there, guys. Happy your belated Halloween. Sorry, I was busy. Mummies, we all know those guys. Goofy, toilet paper wrapped pharaohs, or to the more scientifically astute individual, horrifyingly well preserved peoples. Sometimes, when a person or animal dies, certain processes, natural or human induced, through chemicals or extreme cold, or low humidity, or lack of air may cause certain organic parts of the body that normally decompose and disappear into dust and thin air to become preserved over time. You often hear of examples like the famous 4,000-year-old Iceman, Otzi, or bog bodies like Boxton Man in his fabulously well-preserved hair and clothing, or the typical image of the Egyptian mummy like Ramses II or Ozymandias. However, you sometimes hear about animals, namely relatively recently extinct animals, being preserved as mummies, most notably mammoth mummies like Layuba, the Yekejer mammoth, and the Jarkov mammoth. Seriously, how is this not an SCP? Animals frozen over thousands of years with hair, muscle, and other tissue still attached. However, today we are going to look at another type of mummy. A dinosaur mummy. Dun dun dun. Sorry for the bad audio and for being sick, by the way. The dinosaurs, or at least the non-birdie kind, died out around 66 million years ago during the KPG mass extinction event. The conditions favorable for preserving organic bodies over such a long time period are almost impossible, and that is why, in truth, we have never found a dinosaur quote-unquote mummy, like those of humans, mammoths, and cats. Mummies are only good for thousands of years, not millions. The oldest known naturally mummified human body is only 6,000 years old, and it's a severed head. And this is why the process of fossilization is the main process by which paleontologists learn and study about dinosaurs. You might have heard about a few dinosaur quote-unquote mummies in news stories, but in actuality these are not proper mummies by any use of the word. So, what's the difference between a fossil and a mummy? Well, the main difference is the fact that a mummy is the actual tissue and remains of a once-living creature, in the same way something like leather was once the skin of a cow, or fur was once part of a hairy little creature. While fossils, on the other hand, are not the actual tissue and flesh, but only a cast. The original flesh has been completely replaced by rock and mineral over time. To put it more simply, a mummy is the real deal, while those fossils are an imitation. In a way, I guess. An imitation that gradually forms over millions of years by seeping into the exact same place and turning it into stone. And this is why, most of the time, fossils are almost exclusively the bones of an organism, and not the flesh, because typically, that flesh is the first to go. It is only in mummies that the tissue and soft stuff gets preserved by time, and then turned into a fossil. They are fossils of mummies. A rare preservation of a rare preservation. These fossilized mummies are some of the most prized and sought after in all of paleontology, as they often give us a very, very detailed insight into how these animals looked and functioned in life. That cannot be gleaned from the more traditional fossilized bones. A really neat example of this is the genus Edmontosaurus. The end of the Cretaceous period was dominated by a group of herbivorous dinosaurs called the Hadrosaurs, most famous for being a frequent lunch item for Tyrannosaurus rex. These guys partied it up like it was 1999, right up until, yeah. The North American genus known as Edmontosaurus was among them, and some of the largest and most prolific to boot. The two most famous species of the genus being Edmontosaurus regalis and Edmontosaurus anectens, a.k.a. Anatosaurus. A truly American and, I guess, Canadian dinosaur, these guys were all over the place and quite diverse. And this abundance and diversity has resulted in scientists having a lot of specimens of this genus. And with a lot of specimens, at least a few are bound to be the exceptional mummy. We have at least a handful of dino mummies belonging to Montosaurus, and subsequently it's probably one of the dinosaurs we know the most about, in that we have a generally good idea of what it would look like in life, skin and all. Many specimens are almost cocooned within a mold of fossilized soft tissue surrounding the skeleton, and from this, scientists have gathered that, for one thing, the dinosaurs were a bit chubbier than previously believed. From specimen AM and H 5060, we know that a Montosaurus was almost completely covered in small round scales, no feathers, and how some bones were connected and attached. Specimen UALVP 53722 illustrated to scientists that Edmontosaurus regalis possessed a fleshy soft tissue comb or display structure on the top of its head, much like that of a rooster's, 
much unlike some of its other hadrosaur cousins, which possessed a crest made of bone. LACM 23502, housed in LA, suggested Montosaurus and Nectins had a much more hoof-shaped and extensive beak structure than most of the previously thought illustrations and restorations gave it. However, there is a particular specimen that I found most interesting, and is among the, if not the, best preserved in Montosaurus mummy ever discovered. Back in 1999, a high school student by the name of Tyler Larson discovered the remains of a fossil on his family's property in North Dakota. However, he didn't think much of it until years later when he was a paleontology student and began to fully grasp what he had found. Returning to the site and excavating it with paleontologist Philip Manning in 2007, the specimen nicknamed Dakota was big news. As Manning said to the Washington Post, when you actually look at the detail of the skin, the scales themselves are three-dimensional. The arm is breathtaking. It's a three-dimensional arm. You could shake the dinosaur by the hand. It just defies logic that such a remarkable specimen could be preserved. Over the past decade, scientists have been slowly cleaning and examining Dakota. However, to this day, it appears all the examinations of this dinosaur remain unpublished and non-peer-reviewed. There's been a lot of hearsay about Dakota, and it might be very interesting to discuss this hearsay. Just keep in mind that these are rumors from paleontologists and researchers, and not peer-reviewed papers. A picture was posted very recently on the internet of Dakota's foot. Researchers confirmed this and posted a tentative diagram of the fossilized foot, and the results are interesting. Behold, a handshake that took 66 million years. For one thing, Dakota's foot is oddly hoof-like, with a large hoof-like weight-bearing claw, while other parts of the foot are fully encased in a mitten of flesh. A whole bunch of structures we never would have guessed from the bones alone. Other studies of the preserved tendons and muscles on the rear legs and tail suggest Dakota could run 45 kilometers per hour, or 28 miles per hour, which is thankfully faster than the speculated top speed of Tyrannosaurus rex, which it would have shared the ecosystem with. The scale impressions of Dakota apparently vary in size and shape across the body of the animal, which may imply color patterns in life, with a particular area above the arm joints possibly suggesting a monosaurus had stripes there in life. This scale pattern method is actually something that, rumor has it, has been seen in other Edmontosaurus mummies. One as of yet unnamed specimen housed at the American Museum of Natural History was supposedly viewed and studied by a member of the Saurian video game team. He posted a map of his research of the scale sizes across the very well-preserved specimen online, and the results are shocking. These scale impressions, if accurate, would show us almost the exact coloration pattern this animal might have bore in life all across its body, with spots and stripes, almost like a modern mammal. We'd essentially know the shading of the skin, but not the exact colors, much like a Jojo manga panel, or a black and white picture. But, again, keep in mind all this is speculative and hearsay right now, but it is still very exciting. Hopefully, these dinosaur mummies like Dakota will be properly examined and published in the not-too-distant future, so we might put a Montosaurus alongside the other dinosaurs we know almost exactly what they might have looked like in life, like Microraptor or Anchiornis. It's an interesting time we live in where dinosaurs are slowly but surely filling out. No longer are they just complete mysteries only of bone to us, but of muscle, fat, and flesh, and yes, even skin and color. All of this thanks to these naturally well-preserved and special dinosaur mummies, and who knows how many other ones are just waiting to be discovered. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this rather short video. Sorry, I'm very sick right now, and uh, my audio equipment is, is kind of lost. I'll get it. I'll find it, figure it out. But uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll probably make a video, another one sometime soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.